it's important to admit when you're wrong, but is it important to admit when you're almost probably certainly about to be wrong? We made a prediction for Denver's first snowfall. Lisa Hidalgo, chief meteorologist at Denver 7, guessed this Friday. I put my money on Wednesday the 29th. Hi, Lisa. Is it too late to say I don't want to be on the show today? <laughs> <laughs> Is that how afraid you are of being wrong? Yeah, yeah you know what happens. It, it was a guess, right? It was, an, it was just an estimated guess. Well, I suppose we should establish snow not likely by Friday. No. In fact, we're talking, eh, there will be some rain a little later in the week. Snow for the mountains, but nah, not down across the plains. It, we may, though, we may uh, see a little early next week. A little too far out to get specifics, but this next storm Monday into Tuesday could bring a little bit of snow to the metro area. Could be our first, which would make you pretty close to that guess. Do you remember what I win if I win? I'm pretty sure it was a box of Pop-Tarts, but you were not okay with that. So I thought if you do win, I'll take you to our little cafe. We, you know, we've got a little uh, convenience store here at Denver 7, and you can pick out one of your favorite cold coffees from there. How about that? I like an iced coffee. All right, so some rain and potentially some snow in the forecast. Lisa, it was so dry and so windy at the start of the week that there were red flag fire warnings up and down the front range. Then, Temperatures plummet overnight. I mean, the difference between day and night right now is remarkable. Where are we overall when it comes to moisture, to cold? This is pretty typical this time of year. I mean, this is why I love Colorado, why, why I love being a meteorologist here, because we do see such intense swings. I mean, we were looking at, yeah, high fire danger earlier in the week and then dropped down to 27 degrees early Tuesday morning, coldest morning that we've seen since last spring. And it brought us obviously down below freezing. So it was a cold one. Now we're looking at temperatures climbing back up into the 70s on Saturday. So we get some really big swings this time of year, uh, which is good. But you know what it ends up doing is it creates some pretty gusty winds. That's typically what we'll see on the plains this time of year. You'll get the snow in the mountains. You'll get the winds on the plains, which is good. People are always you know so upset because it rips the leaves off the trees. But you want that to happen. I mean, you bring the leaves off so that when we do get that first heavy snow, it's not breaking branches. Now, the wind is also contributing to the fire risk when it's mm -hmm. dry. And what is the moisture picture? Moisture picture looks at this point pretty good, actually under some wetter than average conditions over the next probably 10 to 15 days, which is good. Drought conditions have drastically improved on the western slope, especially down across southwestern Colorado. I mean, it's an unfortunate case where you look at all the flooding, uh, flooding that we had in Pagosa Springs, but it has helped with the drought in that area. Yeah, a bit of feast or famine. Mm -hmm. I got acquainted with a new concept recently, thanks to the folks at Climate Central. And the concept is atmospheric thirst. This is different from a thirst trap. Uh, to quote Climate Central, as temperatures rise, the atmosphere gets thirstier and pulls more water from streams, soils, and plants, causing worsening drought and fueling wildfire risk. I mean, Lisa, this strikes me as a vicious cycle. Mm -hmm. When you look at human caused warming, what ends up happening is, as you get then a warmer atmosphere, that creates more evaporation, which then obviously dries things out, uh, which can create this, like you said, kind of this, this rough cycle that we continue to see as we warm the atmosphere human caused by. I mean, this is a question of evaporation to some extent, because that thirst mm -hmm. is the pulling from the streams, the, the soil. You have an evaporation demonstration in your home, <laughs> I understand, that you've imparted to your girls from the earliest ages. Oh, yeah. Since they were about three, we talked about latent heat processes, you know, condensation, evaporation. And the girls would always say as I got out of the shower, Mommy, I'm so cold. And to this day, they say, I know, I know. It's because of evaporation. And evaporation is a cooling process, Mom. It's the one thing they're probably going to remember when it comes to meteorology as they go into college. <laughs> and they're squeaky clean walking out of the shower. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I grew up in Southern California, which sees quite a few earthquakes. Mm -hmm. And uh, my hometown meteorologist had a seismograph on the weather set. Not kidding, it was KESQ Channel 3, so it was called Seismo 3. On Friday, here near Black Forest, there was a magnitude 3 quake. 
Is seismic activity on your radar as a meteorologist in Colorado? Was the pun intended there? Pun intended? On my radar? No. <laughs> Is it... Do we track earthquakes with radar? No, but just as a meteorologist, you know, it, it is because, let me tell you this, I had a seismograph in my house growing up. It didn't work, but my dad, a geologist, right. went to the School of Mines. He used to take us there all the time to watch the seismographs from Colorado earthquakes, which was fascinating. I mean, they've got a whole set up there at, at mines, uh, but we had one in our house that didn't work. But it, to me personally, it's of interest because I grew up, you know, watching these things and learning about it. And we have, I think, what is it now, five major fault lines in Colorado. And of those, there's, I think, three that have the capability of producing a 7.0 magnitude or greater. So it is fascinating, especially when you hear about one of these, because most of what we see earthquake wise, very minor. Mm. You don't even feel them right, you know, day to day. They're, they're so tiny. But uh, the San Luis Valley being a hot spot for it. They've got uh, down and through the Sangre de Cristo fault line there. Uh, we see a lot of activity. So, yes, it interests me, but on a day-to-day -day basis, it doesn't much come up on Denver 7. You are making a reference, I think, in Golden to the National Earthquake Information Center. In part, it's there because it is not a terribly seismic place, mm -hmm. and you want a spot that measures earthquakes around the world okay. not to be in a particularly vulnerable place. I love that you grew up with this <laughs> seismograph. All right. Uh, is Halloween going to trick or treat us, Lisa Hidalgo? Right now, it's still a little far off, but it looks pretty good, actually. I mean, you know, Colorado Halloweens are so all over the board. I mean, growing up here, I can remember the Halloweens where I was bundled up. You didn't even see our costumes. <laughs> but at that, that was also the time when we used pillowcases to get candy. I think now they've got all the little fancy baskets, right? Um, but it, it can go, I mean, from really heavy snow to gorgeous, beautiful fall conditions. Right now, things are looking good uh, for Halloween. You look back, historically, though, warmest Halloween ever on record, 79 degrees. Uh, most recently, that was back in 2016. The coldest, 7 degrees. That was back in 2019. Snowiest Halloween ever on record, 8 inches back in 1972. That's a tricky one, getting the kids out. I would actually prefer snow over rain on Halloween, though. Oh, that's interesting. I see that, mm -hmm. yes. Although the idea of bundling up and covering the costume is sort of painful. But the point is, Halloween can be a time of some extremes yeah. in terms of heat and cold. Exactly. I think, though, this Halloween's looking pretty, pretty moderate. So that's good, right? I think you owe me something now for delivering a good Halloween forecast. Give me the coffee <laughs> back. Give me the coffee back. Lisa, thanks so much for being with us. Thank you. So nice to be with you.